Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about the AutoArt Toyota 2000 GT Coupe 1965 in the silver color. So if you're new to this channel this is my first uh, 118th that I'll be showcasing and I'll be doing a lot more of them but for now this is the first model I want to do because this is one of my most favorite cars <laughs> in the world so why don't we just get through the intro and we'll see the car in all its glory all right welcome back uh, I would like to know if you guys like the intro or not. How do you like it? It's cheap, quick, and easy, but I've been using it for a while. I kind of I kind of like it. It's nice and quick and simple, but if you'd like to see maybe another intro, please let me know. Now in front of you sits the Auto Art uh, Toyota 2000 GT Coupe. I would equate this is as one of the most gorgeous sexy cars that has ever been made just the sheer lines alone you know the nice the nice hips on the front of the and and just the sheer lines and then the scoop at the back it and the little the hips at the rear oh it just it evokes what the Jaguars E type D type of the of that generation of course the the Ferrari you know 250 GTOs you know the 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 swept back look just looks like it's speed of course this this car was a limited production front engine rear drive two seat that was done in collaboration with Yamaha at the Toyota oh I'm sorry at the Tokyo Motor Show in 1965 was when it first made its first first appearance and then the 2000 GT was manufactured under contract by Yamaha between 67 and 70 in Japan. It was exclusive to Toyota's Japanese retail sales channels. You could tell that when they made this car they really thought uh, further ahead. Now as, as like I stated earlier the design was widely considered a classic among 1960s Gran Turismos. The bodywork was inspired by E-Type Jaguars. Its smooth flowing bodywork was executed in aluminum featured pop-up headlights and large plexiglass covered driving lamps in the front, as you could see. <clears throat> and the bumpers were minimal. And of course, Everybody will know the iconic car, which was, which was built for the James Bond film You Only Live Twice. It was a factory produced convertible, was never offered. So what they did was they actually manufactured it for that specific movie. Of course, Auto Art does make that particular model too, and is highly sought after. I chose this color specifically because it shows off the lines. The white one is of course beautiful, the red, uh, they have, do make them in several different colors. I think the silver just brings out the beauty in the vehicle itself. So why don't we get to the model itself and the features that it it does <clears throat> just a side note uh, 
1967 uh, James Bond movie you only live twice was filmed in Japan two one-off topless models fitted only with tonneau covers to simulate functioning uh, convertible roofs were made specifically for the film it is claimed a targa had been considered to accommodate the burly six foot two Sean Connery this retained the original car's fax back profile but it eliminated rear side windows purposely Connery's head stuck out at the top of the roof and of course the Bond actor Daniel Craig voted the Toyota 2000 GT as his favorite Bond car of all time and it is one of my favorite too but I do like the Lotus Esprit I would vote that as one of my more favorite ones. <clears throat> so when Auto Art decided to make it, it was a nice version. Now there, this is the upgraded version that was produced in their Millennium series. So it added a slightly different features and uh, hit captures it really well so what we got is we'll see some of the opening features that this car actually does have and how beautifully they did it no it's see the doors fully open on both sides It's very delicate. Now I found in my example that the hatch doesn't stay up, but today it's deciding it wants to cooperate, which is a yay. <coughs> and that they did. Nice engine work. But the really nice thing about it is at the bottom, you have these two little panels that also open up on nice piano hinges to show a little bit of level of detail and that is on both mo both sides they are a tight fit so I do recommend you using a type of tool to open it and of course this one doesn't want to open for me I think if you there we go and that is the nice opening features on the car and they do a beautiful level of detail on the doors themselves I'll try to bring it up a little bit closer so we could see the level of <coughs> excuse me nice detail they give you a nice you know door handles armrest of course it'd be nicer if it was a little bit different color but of course this is a right hand drive which would be, which would be the Japanese model so you could see oop, uh, again the back doesn't like to stay up fully all the time so I don't want to force it too much but you can see the nice level of detail that they did in the front of course the simulated wood steering wheel of course the gauge cluster and gauge pack and the steering <coughs> I'm sorry the gear shift Let's see if we can get it to see a little bit in the back how you could see nice beautiful work a nice flocked carpeting in the back so they did put a beautiful level of detail into it. You could see a little bit more of the dash detail on this side as much as you can. They give you, you know, a nice photo etched seat belts. And a nice, I don't know if you could see it all too well on this one, but there's a nice detail on the seats and of course that's the side panels that opening show a little bit of 
detail you know here again is the nice spotlights in the in the beautiful uh, lamps behind them and the plexiglass at the front little bumperettes it's not too much as in detail in here it's kind of just a big black box but they do have give you that opening panel but I will close them up because there's really no point in having them open and I'll close up the doors I think that's as much interior as we really need to see along with the back but the, what they did is some beautiful detail with the hood and the engine itself they give you a nice hinge detail in the front let's see if I could show you here where the hood is attached and then it breaks in here instead of having that just separate little add-on pieces and then <clears throat> putting in the dog leg hinges to open up the hood they actually took the time and effort and put in beautifully hinged beautiful beautifully hinged pieces in the front here to hold up the hood along with the hood itself has the retainer now you could see that they did a little bit extra work on these newer models with the engine itself and they did a very nice uh, work on the newer versions of this vehicle and it is exceptionally done well, I'll close up the hood and now you can see a nice little feature that they added underneath is we'll show you the underneath first maybe there we go so uh, I'm gonna have to bring it out a bit bear with me there we go they added a nice little details underneath you know with the separate suspension piece a separate exhaust kind of uh, put in there very nice chrome tips of course the engine you could see in the suspension of course the tires and rims themselves are just incredibly but a nice little trick that they added in the front is a little let's see here a little button it's not too obtrusive so it's not too bad but you flip that button in and out and it raises the front lights and it gives it you know a nice little look to the car itself and I you know really appreciate that level of detail that they've added to the vehicle itself and you could see the full view with the lights up of course with them down you know it it's gives it a beautifully sporty look and the switch is quite durable so they will keep the lights up which is very nice <coughs> sometimes you get them and they won't stay fully and they eventually drop down but this one is quite sturdy now the rims themselves and tires are you know beautifully done you can't fault auto art for making a beautifully classic car in a very attractive color so of course you can see that there's glazing fully around in the back separate pieces for the lights the bumper rats of course they've added a nice little detail of the little license plate lights of course the chrome tips little side marker lights are all separately applied little pieces 
along with the very fine delicate trim that's been put around nice little badging I don't know let's see if we could zoom in to see the badging that they've added it's a nice little decal one of the highlights in, uh, of the car of course is just the sheer shape of it I am just in love with this car but that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope it I showed the car in its glory and described it as well as I could I do highly recommend this one if you can get it in any of the colors that it comes in and if you're lucky enough to already have one then you'll know what I mean if you're looking for the James Bond version they go at a high price now on a secondary market but again if you like this video and you'd like to see more of these types of videos especially the 118th please uh, let me know in the comments and like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video thank you